Are we even on here? Yeah. Okay. Hi. Um, this video is just going to be a short little video. Uh, you know, I was uh, digging a little bit uh, too deep in my, uh, you know, uh, you know, storage for guitar parts and all that kind of shit going on. So I just recently uh, found a, a very old guitar neck uh, from a guitar that I bought in the late 90s, I would believe. Maybe 98 or 99 or something, something like that. However, um, I bought the guitar and I played it for a couple of years. And uh, this, the, the guitar starts to, uh, you know, not be very playable anymore because the neck starting to get a little back bow. And you know, um, in a cheap guitar, I think the brand is uh, Stag. Yeah, it's a you know it's a, I think it's a Belgium uh, brand uh, established in the early '90s or something like that. Uh, so uh, you know, with a one-way truss rod, it's not possible to you know to get a, a positive bow when the guitar when the neck starts to get, give a little bit back bow. So, you know, I found a solution on that in the early 2000s or something like that. My very, very first time taking off a fretboard from a guitar, I took off the fretboard, I uh, uh, took the truss rod and I just flipped it over and put it back and glued back the fretboard again. So now when uh, tightening the truss rod, I can actually get a positive bow instead of a negative bow that is supposed to be. Because of course on these cheap guitars there's no double action on the you know on the uh, truss rods. However, I just recently uh, found the neck, so you know I'm about to throw this neck away. But I was thinking, well maybe I should uh, keep the truss rod uh, and the fretboard itself because you always uh, need uh, some dark wood for making sawdust from it and maybe fill some pores or you know whatever you you would like to blend with some wood or anything like that to get a you know to to fill up uh, anything that you would like to however I, I got a neck here it's a it's, you can clearly see it's a stag right there with an old classic uh, uh, I think it's a, I think it's a brass yeah, I think it's brass uh, plate there, said stag. However, I just uh, a couple of hours ago took the fretboard off of here, of course with, uh, with heat. And uh, this is what it's looking like. However, this is the truss rod. You know, as you can see here, if I'm coming a little closer here, you can see that uh, this is a simple, a very simple truss rod right there. Uh, it has some welding right there. Uh, and this piece right here is just a simple construction, as you can see. And uh, here we have some round piece of, of metal. And here we have a square piece of, uh, well not square, it's a rectangular piece of metal that is welded onto the uh, to the um, to the this round one right here, and of course you can see that uh, uh, the tightening construction uh, is uh, on the round piece right here. So this is uh, the way it's supposed to be in the guitar neck, and you have the fretboard on top of here. So when tightening this one, you can see that this is what happens here. Uh, if the fretboard is on top of here, that means that the neck get a back bow. And that is supposed to be because compensate for the string tension on the, on the neck. However, when I took off the fretboard of the guitar the first time, just took off the, uh, took out the, this truss rod and just flipped it over like this and just put it in there again. And I glued back the fretboard on top of there. Now, when tensioning this one right here, you can clearly see that the, the bow is going in the other direction, 
compared to this. So I thought I was a genius and it actually worked pretty damn well I must say. Uh, so after doing this I could actually use the guitar for many more years. However, uh, it's a long way to take off the fretboard of a guitar and you know just to do something like this. You know this is not an easy task and I didn't really know what I was doing at the time. So um, when I glued back the fretboard I didn't think that far to use uh, pins as a guideline to, when gluing it back. So you know the fretboard was actually a little bit off um, and uh, back in the days I didn't know you know I well I knew a lot about uh, well I knew some about guitar repairs because I was doing simpler jobs you know s small things back then however I could easily have drilled some guide holes here just to keep the fretboard uh, in, you know good and now since this fretboard has been off two times now you can clearly see that is this is no good anymore you know it's a it's a crack there it's a you know with cracks everywhere you can see there's missing material right here as well so you know we keep this in case I need some dark uh, uh, making sawdust out of this and you can fill it with pores or anything like that or maybe if I'm refretting a guitar or something I can you know if I'm taking the ends off the frets the tang I can actually fill the the little gap there with the, the dark sawdust as well however this is just a short little story what I did back in the day to solve the problem with a uh, uh, a guitar with a back bow. Uh, you know, back in those days, I know this particular brand had uh, serious problems with guitar necks, well, guitars getting back bows on the necks. That has to do with, uh, with the wood, uh, mainly the wood that guitar is made out of, because if it's not uh, perfectly dried, uh, with a little percentage of uh, moisture in there, uh, it actually will, uh, you know, the it w wood is a living material, so that's the problem. I thought I did a huge, uh, you know, a thing here uh, back in the days, well, 20 years ago, when I took the fretboard off of the guitar, and uh, people was pretty impressed about how I did this. Uh, I know, you know, back in those days there was no, there was no YouTube, there was, uh, you know, only Yahoo and, you know, some simple, simple things on, on, YouTube, uh, on uh, internet, so... But I actually was a member of a forum, I don't remember what it's called, I don't think it's around anymore. But I told them about this process, and also back in those days there was no digital cameras and all that kind of stuff going on, so... I used a shitty, very shitty webcam to take some pictures and I uploaded them on this site and people was holy shit, that is amazing, I'm gonna do that to my guitar, you know, because uh, there was a lot of people having back bows on their necks and they didn't think about this. You know, uh, if the guitar doesn't have a double action uh, truss rod, this is convenient, you know, just that. Uh, just take the fretboard off and just flip the truss rod and just glue the fretboard back on, right? No, it's not easy and I don't really suggest you doing it either. But you know, back in those days, I think it was a more, more of a learning, a learning uh, process than, uh, you know, actually get the guitar playable. However, I got both the guitar playable and uh, I did learn something about truss rods after all. However, the uh, fretboard wasn't in its right position and you know, it's, of course it was playable, but it wasn't good. So uh, in the early 2000s, I actually put the guitar away. Eventually I sold the body. It was a flying V, if I remember correctly. I keep the neck, so yeah. I think I'm pretty good to throw this neck away now. Just keep the truss rod 
and the fretboard. So that's just about it. Um, just in between passes with my CNC machine, um, doing some, you know, um, I have some serious uh, things going on here so I, uh, that I can't really tell you about. Uh, but uh, there have been some things going on for the past uh, couple of weeks here. Uh, so uh, it's been working great. So uh, I should continue working with my CNC machine now. I actually have some piece of wood on there that is going to be... Well, maybe something I can use this one in. I have no idea. However, uh, until next time, take care now. Bye bye then.